This week on Excelsior Journeys, we have part one of our Clubhouse mini series. And my guests are Ellie Rods and Ali Del V, two voiceover artists who have found a home on Clubhouse and a wonderful community in the voiceover world. Uh, you'll be hearing more about how they got involved with Clubhouse, how they got into the 529 Club and placed incredibly well in the 529 competition, which I am also involved in, and their rooms that they have started up on their own. It's a great future ahead for the two of them, and it's a really bright future for Clubhouse because they're on there. JLD, do the honors. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of the award-winning podcast, Entrepreneurs on Fire, and you're listening to the Excelsior Journeys with George Soroy. Prepare to ignite. Is there a burning desire within to share your creativity with the rest of the world? Do you insist on pursuing your passion by any means necessary? Then you are on an Excelsior journey, and you are not alone. Welcome back to Excelsior Journeys. This is George Soroy. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you so much for listening to over 80 episodes. Still can't believe how far we've gone here. And if you like what you hear, if you want to hear some more, if you want to share it with your friends and loved ones, by all means, please send them over to he's got it.com slash podcasts. That shows all the different platforms where they can choose which one they would like to subscribe to. If you're an Apple user, I strongly suggest using the Apple Podcast app. It's terrific. If you would like to leave a rate and review, that's always appreciated. If you like to click on the Buy Me a Coffee link, that's incredibly appreciated. Now, this month is a very special month because we are focusing on Clubhouse, on the Clubhouse app. And it just so happens that I have about five invites for Clubhouse, and I am willing to give one away each week uh, through a very special drawing. All you have to do is send me a screenshot of you subscribing to Excelsior Journeys, whichever platform you you wish, and send that over to George at He's Got It dot com. Send that over, and you will be in the running to get an invite for Clubhouse. Now, keep in mind that Clubhouse is currently open to Apple users, but if you are an Android user, I understand that they will be opening the app up to Android users, if not this month, then in the very near future. So you can always get that invite and hold on to it as well. So this is open to Apple and Android users. Just go ahead and send your screenshot of your subscription to Excelsior Journeys at george at he's got it dot com. This week, I have Ellie Rods and Ali Del V, two incredibly accomplished voiceover artists who have really made a home for themselves on Clubhouse. And it's going to be a really fun conversation. We're going to take a quick break. When we come right back, we're going to dive right into this conversation. But first, a quick word from our sponsor of this week's episode, which features our guests from last week's episode. Six authors, six extraordinary stories. Throughout history, storytellers have shared visions of wondrous worlds just beyond the edge of reality. And that tradition lives on with the anthology, All Things Weird and Strange. Within its pages, you'll find two stories of celebrities facing heartbreak in futuristic and fantastical worlds, two of power and ability and their inherent possibilities, and two of space exploration and disasters faced by humanity, all with heartwarming characters and compelling action. Prepare to leave your reality behind with All Things Weird and Strange, featuring authors Shelley X. Leon, Michael Hilton, Amanda Lance, Stephanie Hansen, L.L. Montez, and Jessica Marie Baumgartner. Get your copy of All Things Weird and Strange today, available now through all major booksellers in ebook and paperback. For those of you who have not taken part in Clubhouse, if you are an Apple user, by all means, please go ahead and definitely get involved in this. It is an audio based app that opens the doors to such an amazing community, no matter what your passions are. And if you're an Android user, I my understanding, 
and I could be wrong about this, but what I've heard has been confirmed that Clubhouse is actually going to be opening the doors to Android users, if not this month, then very, very soon. So I wanted to put together a special mini series to kind of help all new users and also people that are a little bit more experienced, but want to learn a little bit more about the community itself. I wanted to provide a little glimpse inside there. And one of the different passions that really grabs me, obviously, is voiceover. And, you know, with voiceover, with podcasting, with writing, with audiobook narrating, it's all there. It's all on Clubhouse. And there are all so many great communities that that cater to those passions. So I'm really, really blessed to be a part of that. And a big shout out to KM Robinson for inviting me there in the first place. For this episode, I'm going to be talking a lot about the voiceover community, which I already knew was a very generous and very giving and very loving and very supportive community. I didn't know exactly how much until I came across so many of the people that are there on Clubhouse, including my two guests, for this week, Ellie Rods and Ali Del V. This has just been an amazing experience getting to know the two of them and turns out competing alongside them because we took part, all three of us took part in the week four challenge of the 529 Club's voiceover competition where over 100 competitors went ahead and, and gave their 45 second clips to to the panelists, and were also judged by the audience. And from all of those, only 16 made it to the semifinals. And I'm proud to say that all three of us made that cut. We'll find out what happens next week. But next week, it goes from 16 to 6. And then from 6, it goes to 1. And that one winner gets a voiceover agent. So there's a lot riding on this. And it's great to see this sort of Strong passion, camaraderie, and talent. Wow. The talent is just absolutely amazing. And it blows me away, always keeps me motivated. And I got two really incredibly talented people here that not only do some great work on their own, but have combined to do some terrific clubhouse work as a team. And they're going to be talking a lot about that. So it is my privilege to announce for this week's guest, Ellie Rods and Ali Del V. How are the two of you today? Hello, hello, hello. I'm doing great. This is Ali Del V speaking. What's going on? Thank you, George, for inviting us. Thank yes, you for, definitely. for saying yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for inviting us, George. This is Ellie Rods, and I'm super excited to be here. This is awesome. And again, I I couldn't be couldn't be happier to have the two of you on this show. So before we jump into getting the history of the two of you in terms of voiceover, but also with Clubhouse, tell us a little bit about the room that you host, because this is fantastic. Yeah, definitely. So we actually have a club on Clubhouse and it's called Ellie and Allie. This club was birthed out of Ali and I's love for the arts and pretty much everything that we love combined together, whether it's film, voice acting, singing, and art, even art as well. So definitely it was kind of birthed from there. And we wanted to create like a safe space for all creatives to come together and then just share their talents. We have like a lot of stuff going on with it. We have like game nights, we have improv. We are actually um, looking to also have interviews with industry professionals, but we have even like singing, singing open mics. We want to have also mini concerts. So we have a lot in store and it's going to be really exciting, but we just also want to give a lot to the arts community and in turn as well, be able to, you know, just bring everyone together and then just have a good vibe together. <laughs> Ellie pretty much summed it up. It's all that and more. We want to have a space. It's a variety show. So we do on Mondays, it's more of the variety show. On Fridays is when we usually have our open mic nights. And then somewhere in between, we have our mini concerts that we decide to do together, kind of on the fly. <laughs> but it's been a great experience. We have had this club for about less than a month now, but the traction has been amazing. And the people that have come through have just out 
are astonishing. So it's been going really great and it's made our friendship so much closer. And not only that, but the, but s- some members of that, of that uh, talented community are going to be guests here on the show in the near future. We just have to figure out the scheduling, but it's looking like June and July. It's going to have uh, quite a few clubhouse uh, clubhouse people on there. So I'm really excited about that. Now, Let's go back to what I always call the lightning bolt moment, which is that moment in time when you experience something that makes you point in that direction and say, that's where I want to go. That is the life I want to live. That is the that is the kind of person I want to be. Now, since we're all involved in this wonderful world of voiceover, what was that for each of you? My lightning moment kind of came in different spurts and different bolts. My little backstory is that when I was younger, I was going deaf in both of my ears and it was a bit of a a journey for me to get my surgery, get my hearing back together, the healing process, all of that and building my confidence from there. But I told myself when I was really sick that I want to do something great and I want to do something big. And if I can have a second chance, I would take it and run with it. And I got better. So this is me taking my second chance and running with it. I have wanted to do voiceover since I was very young, since I was a third grader. I didn't really know that it was quite a career as expansive as it was because I only thought of it ever as just cartoons. But it was something I've always wanted to do. I had moments where I was bouncing between voiceover and singing as if I had to choose one or the other. So there's been kind of a bounce in between that. But when I graduated college, that was my second lightning bolt. Like the love for it was already there. But the set, the second lightning bolt was once I graduated and was just out in the world, I was like, well, what do I do now? I've only ever <laughs> known school my whole life. What is there left? Like my life has just started. What is this? So I decided to take a voiceover class. I just did crazy amounts of research to try to find something legitimate here in New York City where I'm from. And I found some really cool casting directors that were doing voiceover classes. And it was nothing particularly gave me an aha moment other than the, what do I do now? I got to do something. Oh, let me just follow my dreams. Duh. That's the obvious choice. So that's kind of where my path came. Of course, the pandemic threw a nice little monkey wrench in there. And I stopped for a little while because life just got crazy on a personal level and just, you know, to the world. But Clubhouse has changed everything. That's probably the third lightning bolt, being able to find a community as I've had on Clubhouse and being able to cultivate that community even more so with Ellie has changed everything. So Sort of like three different lightning bolts, I guess, there. But that kind of answers the question. <laughs> and, e- and each one, it sounds like they were building on top of the other as well. Mm-hmm. So that's that's terrific. I, you know, just thinking back about, you know, when I graduated from college back in 98 and also from New York City. Nice. Yep. Oh, yeah. Marymount Manhattan College, class of 98. Ooh, cool, cool. I was Manhattanville. Oh, awesome. Awesome. So, yeah, after I was after I was finished. I don't know why I just like I studied theater. I don't know why I suddenly just stopped everything. But I really should have done that. You know, I should have, you know, focused on the voiceover. I should have just gone through that. I mean, my last class was announcing and voiceovers with Fred Malamed. So, like, why didn't I go further? So, yeah, I, I'm. there are times when I kick myself. But at the same time, like it, it all it all worked out to where it needed to be. So here I am now talking to the two of you. So Ellie, tell me about, tell me about your lightning bolt moment. Oh my goodness. My lightning bolt moment, I would say moments. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So ever since I, even before I was born, my first love was singing when I started growing up. So my father would sing to my mother's belly while Mm -hmm. I was in the womb (laughs) and then I was born. And then every time I heard music, they would say, oh my gosh, like she goes crazy. She starts like bobbing her head and going crazy. (laughs) I would start singing in gibberish at like two years old. I was singing 
like like a virgin by madonna (laughs) which is a very (laughs) odd song for a two-year-old to be like mumbling but you know there you go and then another one was dreaming of you from selena quintanilla so Mm -hmm. i grew up kind of doing that and then as i grew up as well i loved watching cartoons and I would find myself mimicking a lot of the stuff that I would see. I would even mimic people that I knew. Like I'd have like an impression of just people just around me. And I was always kind of like a very goofy kid. I did a lot of stuff. I went into musical theater at one point when I was in, in school. And I did a few productions in high school too. And yeah, I didn't really necessarily say, ooh, I want to be a voice actor until later on in my life. I always had it as an idea, but I had so many loves and so many passions that I didn't know which one to choose. And then Mm -hmm. everything shifted when I left college and I went into hospitality and I totally didn't do anything, anything performing arts wise for so many years. I just went into hospitality, full blown, went into the airline industry, then went into hotels. And I had a, like a really good career in it and I was doing really well, but, and it was fun, but I kind of was like, something's missing. Like I, I need to like kind of get in tune. So when the pandemic came around, I was able to really think about like the stuff that I, that I like, the stuff that uh, makes me happy. And I got in tune with my childhood again. I started remembering all of those first loves that I had, my singing, you know, doing like a bunch of like cartoon characters for fun. And <laughs> nice. then I think my light, I guess if I would say a lightning bolt moment was one day I was sitting um, at the table with my mother and my mother just goes, I don't know why you don't just become a voice actor. Like you're just really <laughs> like, you're really like good at it. You're good at like mimicking voices and just coming up with like ideas for characters. And, and like, you know, you love Disney. So I feel like, you know, that would fit you. I've never wanted to do on camera um, acting. I'm very private in that sense as well. So voice acting gives me that middle ground where I can still, you know, act and create characters, even sing, but not necessarily be like, you know, a full blown on camera actor. (laughs) So I like that about it. And I said, you know what, I'm going to try it out. Yeah. So I went out of my way. I searched for a coach everywhere. I found an amazing coach. Her name is Tracy Fowl. And she she's still my coach to this day. And she's pretty much taught me almost everything about the industry. And I started falling in love with voice acting. And then finally, I found Clubhouse. I started listening in on rooms. And it made me love it even more. And now I'm just like, you know, this is where I need to be. (laughs) So super exciting. I even rekindled my love for music, which is great as well. Um, So, Mm -hmm. yeah, we're just doing the thing. (laughs) And Ellie is a phenomenal singer, a phenomenal singer. Thank you. And Ellie is as well. (laughs) I I was introduced to Ellie singing when she when she did on my own from Les Mis and just blew the whole room away so oh yeah. goodness thank you <laughs> yeah, I, I, will, I will definitely second that so so what was you say like the first real like kind of validating uh, moment for you that made you think like hey I can do this I can make something out of this for me it was like getting into into audiobook narrating that and getting the response that that got for, uh, for me but I'm curious to see, like, what was it that really, you know, kind of grabbed the two of you and just said, like, hey, I can make this happen. You know, like, my passion doesn't have to just be, you know, like something that I was that I would be dreaming about. It can actually come true. Ali, we'll start with you. Oh, hmm, that's an interesting question. There was a time when I was still in college that my friend needed a radio jingle for their radio show. I used to do radio when I was in college. So I would come across my friend Lucas all the time because our slots were one right after the other. And he would tell me, dang, I need a jingle for this. And then I sang something randomly. His, his, his radio show was called midnight jazz and he would have midnight jazz every Tuesday around midnight. So I think I sang to him midnight jazz. And he heard that and he was like, whoa, wait, that sounded kind of good, actually. Can you do a lead in into that and then do the jingle itself and just layer their voice? And I was like, uh, OK, sure. 
So nice. I went into the studio booth and then I did a speaking part, which I guess would be the first time I ever did a commercial read of any kind. Mm-hmm. And then I did the singing layering and it came out great. He played it for years. I think for two or three years, he played that same jingle every single time. And it was recognized by the school. Wow. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, everyone knew me as they knew me for my show. But they also right. knew me for midnight jazz. So for the rest of the time I was in school, it would be, we would have to be one right after the other. Our shows were always together. It was a package deal until I left because he was a year um, under me. Oh, but gotcha. <laughs> that was definitely one of the first moments where I was like, dang, maybe I could do this. And I did another school project where I did an actual character voice too for a friend of mine. And they were like, wow, your voice sounds so different. You can sound so young. That's crazy. So that was definitely a confidence booster into thinking that, you know, maybe I can do this someday. And yeah though there was a gap of time where I didn't pursue voice acting because I was still in school. I I didn't mention this, but right after school, I went down to Orlando because I did the Disney college program. So I was just kind of doing that and hanging around with Mickey Mouse for a little bit. But when I came back up to New York, that's when the lightning bolt moment hit. And that's when I thought back to those projects and thought, you know, maybe I really should go for these classes. And that's kind of the, story on that nice nice were other students asking you to record other jingles for them i they weren't asking me to do jingles but they were asking me to sing on their tracks on soundcloud so i'm on soundcloud somewhere on things that i don't even know of (laughs) and i'm on spotify somewhere not under my own name but under a friend of mine's name (laughs) Wow. <laughs> just kind of doing like ghost vocals in the background. <laughs> That's great. That's great though. Ellie, what about you? What was, what was your validating moment? Okay. So um, one day I was sitting at home. This was a few years ago. And this is kind of what told, like got voice acting in my head, but I hadn't had fully, you know, gone for it until this year. But Mm -hmm. when I did this, it made me think "Hmm, I would be really good at this and I should do it. But I always procrastinated, of course. So I sat down and I love the movie Frozen. I absolutely Mm -hmm. adore it. And I would always post covers of myself singing on SoundCloud. And then I had decided one day, hmm, let me do a cover of Do You Want to Build a Snowman? But in Spanish. <laughs> so, <Whoa. laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was just so sporadic. And I, I, I can do it in English as well. You know, like, and what, what I love about the song is that you're the same character, but you're aging as yeah. the song goes on. So, mm-hmm. you know, Anna starts off like, Do you want to build a snowman? And then in Spanish, <laughs> instead, it's like, y si hacemos un muñeco. <laughs> so oh, it's really God. different. So the funny thing, <laughs> the funny thing about it was that when I posted this cover on SoundCloud, mind you, I, I had a few like, you know, views and, and all of that stuff, because, you know, like I would post it, but I wouldn't really go out of my way to promote my music. Like, hey, listen to my SoundCloud. <laughs> but right. I posted this randomly and then I started getting a bunch of likes and likes and likes. And then I kind of stopped looking at it for like, I don't know, like a month or two after a month or two, it had like 14,000 plays. And I was like, "Uh, okay. And then now like this, like today it has like 99,000, like over 99,000 plays on SoundCloud. Wow. And that is literally, yeah, that is literally like my most, popular song on my SoundCloud, (laughs) ironically. (laughs) So I was like, okay. So I would show it to my friends and, you know, they would giggle and they'd be like, oh my gosh, how did you do that? How did you change your voice? That's so cool. And then they started asking me to perform it at like random parties or my parents, they would just put me on the spot and be like, hey, she can actually make herself sound like a little kid. Hey, dude, dude, do you want to build a snowman? And I'm just like, mom, stop embarrassing me. But, <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, that was kind I of really think I should. OK. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, no, don't make me sing. Don't make me sing. And then I would just sing. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. That is awesome. I love it. I love it. So the two of you are, you know, 
obviously, you know, growing in experience, growing in talent and, you know, getting really solidifying yourself as someone ready to go into this, go into this wonderful field. And then Clubhouse appears. Now, what was your experience? Who was who were your inv- inviters? You know, who were the ones that actually gave you that that golden ticket in there? Oh, my goodness. So I do have a side of me that loves filmmaking and Mm -hmm. screenwriting. So I'm actually kind of working on on that stuff also on the side because I I dabble in everything. So during my journey of finding out about more, you know, finding out more about filmmaking in general, one of my buddies, like he kind of suggested the app for me and he said, hey, you know, join this app and listening, listen in on the conversations and you can learn more about the industry. So I actually joined the app in order to learn more about the filmmaking industry. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I still had the voice acting in the back of my head since my mom had recently said it, but yeah, I joined it in order to do that. And then I was nominated in by a totally like different friend as well, but I was nominated in like almost instantly. I didn't use the app for a few months when I downloaded it, I downloaded it. I got a little scared because I got put into a random room and then I was like, (laughs) okay, I don't, I don't think I want to do this right now. So, Uh (laughs) so I got off the app for a few months and then one day I was like, okay, let me get on the app again, started listening. And I just, now I'm addicted, (laughs) but (laughs) yeah, that's how the story goes for most of us. But yeah. Awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Allie, what about you? So I actually found out about Clubhouse in the most random way. So I was supposed to go to Japan last year, March 2020. And we all know that obviously didn't happen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was very heartbroken. I was watching a lot of vlogs about Japan because I was I wanted to know about the area, where to go, learn a little bit of the language just so I can sort of get by. And I kept up with these different vlogs that I was watching. And one of them was live streaming at the time. And somebody mentioned voiceover while they were just randomly, it had nothing to do with anything. They were walking around a park and talking about this park in Tokyo. And he mentioned clubhouse. And I was like, what the heck is clubhouse? Cause he's saying to go visit and join this club on clubhouse. So I went and I Googled to see what it even was. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, this looks really cool. Maybe I could learn more about voiceover from here. Mm -hmm. Then I found out it was exclusive and I was like, hmm, okay, I'm going to need to find a friend to help me out and get (laughs) in because I'm not going to get in just by knocking on the door. And I have a friend of mine. Her name is Rachel Thanasoulis, and she is an entertainment lawyer, but was also a part. We were both a part of the same acapella group when we were in college. So I saw that she she took a screenshot and she put it on her Instagram story that she was on Clubhouse all night long. And I was like, yes, somebody I know is on Clubhouse. So I reached out to Rachel and I was like, Rachel, girl, I need to get on Clubhouse. Can you help me? And she was like, oh, yeah, I have have a few invites. So she sent me an invite. And then from there, I haven't slept since because I'm always up on Clubhouse. (laughs) (laughs) So so it sounds like it was pretty recent when the two of you got on. Allie, Mm -hmm. when, when did you... When did you join? I joined on St. Patrick's Day. So March 17th wow. of this year. Ellie, what about you? I'm going to look it up right now. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> it was February 22nd. Nice. I, I, f- I, was, I got my nomination from my friend K.M. Robinson, who is a brilliant author and marketer. And so she gave, she gave me her invite on i think it was january 11th i got my phone turned off right now but uh, but that was that sounds Mm -hmm. that sounds pretty pretty you know pretty right there but uh, yeah i started up just like uh, ellie just like you you know like i am an author audiobook narrator podcaster and then voice actor and so the voice actor part I've always been like real, always fascinated with that, you know, just like you guys grew up with with animation. You know, I grew up in the 80s. So it was just like anything that can be made into a toy was given a show. So so it was it was it was an amazing time, you know, for for this, especially all the Sunbow and Hasbro shows, you know, so so getting involved in that and like really 
you know, like me always being fascinated with voice acting. Like that's the more I heard about what was offered there, the more I was just like, wow, this sounds like a, an amazing community. So what was, when you got into the voiceover community, was that when the two of you met? Yeah, yes. pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> so what, so now the two of you are just like this amazing force right now, like in, in our, <laughs> in our, in the, in the, in the round where we both made the semifinals, you know, like Ali, you took second, Ellie, you took first. And so, mm-hmm. you know, it's, and rightfully so, because the two of you are just incredibly talented. So thank you. And, Likewise. Oh, yes, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate that. But, but what was it like when the two of you started talking? It was, it was just, it was kind of weird. We actually freak <laughs> out about it. Um, Cause, okay. So I had been joining voiceover rooms for quite a while. Ali, I think Ali came into the voiceover rooms a little bit after I did. So I was mm-hmm. already kind of situated in, in there. And I knew like most of the voiceover um, crew and everything on that are on the app. Then when I started seeing Ali join, I was just kind of like, oh, okay. Like I would talk to her just a little bit, but like we didn't really like have like a full blown conversation. I don't recall what day it was that we had our first like actual conversation. I think it was a very small, intimate room. And then Mm -hmm. we had like more of a chance to speak to each other. And then um, we followed each other on Instagram. And I think that's kind of where it started. And we started seeing each other like in rooms more often. And then we started noticing, oh, oh, so like, you know, do you sing? It's like, yeah, I sing. And I was like, oh, me too. <laughs> cool. So then, you know, okay, one similarity. Another day, we're just kind of like, hey, we're talking about height. And it's like, oh, well, I'm short. It's like, well, I'm short too. <laughs> it's just like, okay. <laughs> yeah, we're both the same height. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then as it goes, it's like, oh, we're both we're both Latinas, we're both short, we're both tan, Mm -hmm. we're both, you know, we started finding a lot of more like similarities. It's like, oh, do you like musical theater? I love musical theater. And then, you know, we just started finding more. It was kind of scary at one point. I think, I think Allie can maybe mention some of the scary similarities that we ran into because it it was just like, but it was like an instant like connection. It's like friendship at first sight type thing. Mm-hmm. that that's the most yeah. <laughs> beautiful way to phrase that it right. really was friendship at, well I guess friendship at first listen because technically I didn't see <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it, it, it sounds it sounds very much like the moment in Step Brothers between Will Ferrell and John C. Riley. just like did we just become best friends yeah pretty much <laughs> <laughs> pretty much that's exactly how it was <laughs> yeah that's great that's that's awesome that's that's so cool so so you obviously had the rapport between the two of you. You had that, you know, you had that friendship and it sounds like it grew exponentially pretty quickly. Yeah. What was it that made the two of you decide we should start a club? So one day I was working and I think Ellie was working too. Actually, you definitely were working. I was, yeah, I was doing, I was actually doing school right? work oh, school and, work. and commission too. So we were both, we were doing things, but us being who we are we were like i'm bored <laughs> so literally <laughs> let's let's just open a room just for fun i feel like singing do you feel like singing and ellie was like yeah i feel like singing so we decided to just open a room and i think we called it what ellie and ally open a room because we're bored it was something along those lines <laughs> yeah it was it was just a very random title it had no context whatsoever it's yeah. funny because we were procrastinating our like i was supposed to be Big working time. on my homework and finishing a commission and she was working so you know obviously this was not the time for us to open a room yeah, it was definitely like two in the afternoon or so right. Right it was so random the, the day <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and it gained an incredible amount of traction in a way that yes. we didn't expect at all. We figured, mm-hmm. okay, maybe like a few friends will come through, maybe like five. And that's like a great thing. No, that room was flooded. Nice. <laughs> and nice. Ellie and I were like on the back channel. Whoa. We, yeah. Did, did that just happen? Yeah. Did that just happen? <laughs> so we experimented again. And we opened another room again sporadically, and that one blew up even bigger. 
Yeah. That one, that one was massive, Ellie. I think Ellie can definitely speak to that yeah, one. Yeah, definitely. Like we had so many people come in and at one point we have like almost like I think it was like around 20 people, maybe more like on the stage, just waiting in queue to perform something. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then we're just kind of like, and we found ourselves four hours later, we're sitting there still. <laughs> and we're just like, <laughs> yeah. And then I just go like, Ali, I think we should just make a club or something because this is like, like we're getting a lot of people in our rooms and it was just so like it was exciting. Of course, it was like super exciting because we love hearing new music. Like we're always in the singing rooms and we're always listening to like new talent. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we make a really big point in our shows is that we also um, use it to like get like those artists, like those independent artists, more exposure as well. We mm -hmm. even ask them like, hey, um, do you want to plug something? Do you want to talk yeah. about a single you might have streaming on Spotify? So mm -hmm. we gear it a lot towards that. But our us ourselves also just like singing randomly. Like sometimes we're just like, hey, Ali, I just feel like singing musical theater songs. So we just opened a pop up one day, did that. <laughs> yeah, we, def <laughs> we dang sure did that. We really yeah. did. Just like, you know, are, do you feel like singing? Yeah. All right, let's go. <laughs> let's open a room. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> And it's and it's such a, and it's such a great room, too, because it it really does kind of inspire you to want to, you know, want to chime in. If you have like a, a song in you and you know, everything and you want to go ahead and just belt it out, by all means, go for it. I mean, like I, I grabbed I grabbed the flash drive just so I could put into the fire from the Scarlet Pimpernel on there. So that way I could put it in into the car and basically do like a carpool karaoke. You know, nice. <laughs> on, on the way home, because that's the only time that I can really use the app is when I'm on my way home or going to work. And thankfully, a car provides some really good volume anyway. I did learn that I just need to tone my own voice down a little bit. But, you know, hey, it's always it's always good to know. But but I didn't discover the whole five to nine competition until a few weeks ago. When I was actually on my way to the dentist's office and I was hearing all these great people like, you know, Kim Adradnia, who is also a podcaster, an amazing person. Yes, um, she you know, is. Giving, love her. So we big love shout her out so to, much. Big <laughs> shout out to Kim. Kim was one of the people that really, you know, kind of really took me in into this community. So it's uh, she's someone I hold very near and dear. But the there was a lot of talk about. You made the semifinals. Congratulations. I was like, what are they talking about? What is what is all that about? And the more I learned about it, the more I was just like, I want to I want to try it. And so the next week I did. But I was also like rushed with it. You know, it was just like I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Do I do impressions? Do I do reading? Do I do you know, like, do I do characters? What can I do? And finally, it was just like, I'll just read. I'll, I'll, I'll read a little something. Read it. Got some decent feedback. But overall did not make the semifinals, but I got another chance the next week. And that's when I was just like, all right, to hell with this. And I just went all out nine different impressions, 45 seconds, go for it. And thankfully made the semis. So uh, how did each of you find out about, about this competition and what, what was your experience through it? Allie? Well, first off, congratulations on doing the thing. George. Yes. Congratulations. You, you got to take a moment to have a little snap snaps for you. Oh, thank because you, you, you did the damn thing. You did the <laughs> damn thing. Yeah, it was uh, fun. <laughs> so for me, I, I was actually, <laughs> I was actually on my way to get a vaccination for, you know, the, the vaccines mm -hmm. that are going out. Right. And I was just listening to clubhouse. I came, I just, I just saw it on my hallway and I saw a lot of people that I knew were in that room. Mm -hmm. So I was like, OK, I'll listen to this while I get my vaccine because I'm not really good with needles. So I just need to listen to something in my ear as mm -hmm. all that stuff is happening. No. Um, and when I joined in, it was still clouds doing yes. their go at it. And it was phenomenal listening to still clouds do all those different voices to the point where they thought that it was a recorded demo, but it was mm -hmm. just still clouds live. <laughs> Wow. Um, still Clouds so, is amazing. Yes. Yeah, still Clouds is wonderful and amazing. And I, I listened to this and I was like, whoa, this sounds really cool. And then I heard everybody after that. 
And I was like, okay, I think I want to give this a go. The next week I had family over, so I couldn't do it at all. So I missed Uh. the second week entirely, Mm -hmm. Um, but I did know that it was going for four weeks. So I tried last week, the third week, and I gave a good hearty go and got really decent feedback. I didn't make it through, but I was like, Mm -hmm. okay, that's fine. So the fourth week, I decided to take a jab at myself within my own copy. (laughs) And one of my, one of my little voices said, I was trying to do bubbles from the Powerpuff Girls or like some iteration of her. Oh, this was great. And I I, I had said something along the lines of, (laughs) well, you could just not suck in my copy. (laughs) (laughs) Which had people crack up, which had me crack up. Because sometimes you just need to take a jab at yourself and just have fun with it and roll with it. Yeah. And that was received very well. And lo and behold, I am now in the semifinals. Big snaps, big snaps. (laughs) Big snaps. (laughs) Ellie, what about you? Okay, so I am actually a a frequent joiner of the 529 Club's monologue reading. So they do a script reading pretty much every week. I believe it's on Thursdays, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So I would join their readings almost weekly. And, you know, it was fun because it would help me, like, you know, practice by acting and all of that stuff. But then during one of the, the readings at the end, they announced that they're going to have a voiceover contest and that, you know, if any of us do voiceover and we're interested, we should go audition. So I was like, okay, yeah, sure. I didn't um, necessarily know very well what the prize was <laughs> at the time because mm-hmm. I had kind of missed that part. Um, mm-hmm. But I went in and the first audition, I didn't audition because I kind of wanted to listen in. Mm-hmm. And then the second round, I kind of had, I, w- I was very unfocused that week. So I kind of decided to just jump in and just audition. But I felt myself a little bit kind of insecure the first time around. And that did show I didn't make it through the first time around. And it was kind of like a sporadic decision at the time. So once I got that, what I like to do when I have situations where I I might have made a mistake or maybe failed something, I take it as a learning. And I'm like, you know what, I'm going to come back and give it like my 120%, like I'm going to go over and I'm not going to give up because I know it's in me and you know that, okay, I had a little moment where I just kind of flubbed, but you know, it's fine. You just get back up and you keep trying. So Mm -hmm. I went hard at it. I got with my coach Tracy and she also gave me excellent direction as well. And yeah, pretty much I went on the last round, the very last round, because I could have gone on the third round, but I said, "Mm, wait, let me wait. And then I just went on the last round and I got through and I even got first place, which I was very like surprised that I got it. (laughs) Yeah. That was was huge. Now I wasn't, I I wasn't able to listen in to yours because I was also, you know, like at work. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, like I could only participate so much in terms of like the whole thing, but, you know, so when when you had gone, I think that's when I had a, a call come in from a client. But, you know, as soon as I knew that you that you were there, I was just like, yeah, you're, you're getting in. And just I, I just knew you know, like it was <laughs> it was only a matter of time. Just like if you're on that list, you're out there, you're going to get in. And <laughs> sure enough, I was right. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Mm. No, I just did. A, I did a few of um, my impressions. Well, actually, I I have Chris Woodsworth, who's an excellent impressionist. He Mm -hmm. actually helped me perfect my Marge Simpson. So he's a wonderful coach as well with Mm -hmm. impressions. Yes, he's amazing. I got to hear some Marge. I got to hear it. A little bit. (laughs) Do it. Do it. All right. Let's see. Okay. Oh, home. I didn't know you were home. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's great. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's so great. yeah. <laughs> so I got one from each of you. That's great. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So 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 we have this going on. Obviously, we don't know what it's you know what's going to what's going to happen on Thursday. 
but definitely best of luck to the both of you. You guys are going to do great. And uh, so now I got to say, like, overall, for someone who wants, who is curious about Clubhouse, who is very, you know, kind of back and forth, they have this invite sitting in their inbox if they're an Apple user. If they're an Android user, the time is approaching for them to want to at least apply to get on the wait list. Whatever the case, what what tips do you have for them to allow them to get like the most the most out of the whole clubhouse experience? Allie? Follow people who are like-minded as you. Because if you follow people who are not really on your path, you're going to get an interesting algorithm where the rooms in your hallway, hallway meaning the list of rooms that come up in your main feed, they won't exactly align with what you're looking for. So if you're looking for voiceover, for example, look, follow people who are voice actors because then you're going to find those rooms and you're going to be around those like-minded people. If you follow people that are not as like-minded, you will find very interesting rooms on Clubhouse. I'm just going to kind of keep it as PC as possible when I say that. So follow the like-minded people that are on your path. That might be why I'm getting I'm getting it, word from, you know, like I'm getting uh, different clubs that are all about like Bitcoin and yeah, um, yeah and <laughs> Dogecoin. I'm just like, I don't care about this. Why, yeah, am I, why no, am I that... seeing this list about N- NFTs? Why am I seeing more than two rooms about <laughs> you it? No, <laughs> what is an NFT? That's, that's the real question. Here. Yes, that is the real question. But I think everyone <laughs> which is gets a, which those is rooms. A different, which is a different story, which is a, a different uh, topic for a different show. Cause I, <laughs> yeah, <'cause> <laughs> <laughs> Ellie, what do you have to, to advise? So I know that like some people may be hesitant to get Clubhouse because it's still a social network. It's a place where you go and you speak to people. But what's great about Clubhouse is that it caters to both sides. So if you're just someone who likes listening, especially someone who likes listening to podcasts, mm-hmm. Clubhouse is pretty much like something perfect for you because mm-hmm. you like podcasts are you listening to people speak. And that's pretty much what you do on Clubhouse. You sit and you listen to people speak. It's like a live podcast constantly. Or if you want to participate, that's cool too. But there's no like pressure for you to participate. You can just go into room into a room and from the most part, most of the rooms that I've been in, they're pretty safe spaces where, you know, it's not anything like toxic going on. It's very positive. But I would say if you're using Clubhouse as something to learn more about an industry, let's say that you're interested in, whether it's entertainment, whether it's medical, whether it's anything, Mm because there's pretty much a there's a group for everyone on Clubhouse just to be professional And also, like Ali said, follow like-minded people and to also use it as a learning tool because it is such a great learning tool. Like people do not, like literally nobody understands how amazing Clubhouse is. You learn so much and it's free. Like this is information that you literally have to pay for to hear about and you hear it from industry professionals from people that you admire you hear them speaking about things that you want to know about so yeah. it's a great tool for sure absolutely i i could not agree with that more and yeah just that whole element of you know that it's free you're getting hundreds if not thousands of dollars worth of material yes. just being yes. thrown at you on a yes. daily basis and they're just so 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 many so many great people um, that are out there on social media that are giving their time. So speaking of which, where can my listeners find the two of you on social media? Well, on social media where, well, I'm on Instagram at Ellie Rods, E-L-L-I-E-R-O-D-Z, just in case the spelling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we also have, well, we're going to have an official club Instagram coming Woo-hoo. soon. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we'll follow us and, and you'll be able to know what the club Instagram will be, but yeah. <laughs> awesome. And for myself on both, I mean, my main platforms really are TikTok and Instagram. 
as well as Clubhouse. I think probably actually technically Clubhouse is probably number one because I spent a lot of hours <laughs> on Clubhouse. <Yeah. laughs> but they're all at Ali Delvey, A L Y D E E V E E. So yeah. Ali Delvey. Oh wait. Oh, Ali. <laughs> Lord, <laughs> Lord. Just want to me... make sure that's right. It's all right. <laughs> Let me try that again. Ali, A O I, Del, D E L, V V E E. There we go. Holy moly. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> I'm confusing my name and my stage name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it happens. Also, on, on mine, I do have like a, a little kind of link tree type thing, but I use milkshake instead. And my other socials are on there, but I wasn't going to sit and kind of, I have a lot of socials. I'm almost on every platform. So just nice. click on the thing on my Instagram and you'll see the rest of them. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. And this is just the beginning when it comes to Clubhouse here on Excelsior Journeys in the month of May. You've already heard you know, from two great sources just how amazing this app can be, what kind of material it can provide. And again, as Ellie said, it's all free. So this is something that you definitely want to get in on. Even if you're not like a, a social media junkie, just the material, the information that you can get from your chosen passions, it will just give you such a boost. It will give you such so much motivation. It will give you so much inspiration. And funny enough, you will indulge a little bit in procrastination while you're going through with this. But at the same <laughs> time, everything, everything in, in this, in Clubhouse has been worth it. Especially for me, I come out, you know, like I feel like a big winner here, just having Ellie and Allie as my friends and guests here on the show. So for Ellie and Allie, this is George Soroy saying to all of you, ever upward, and I will see you next week. Today's show is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. If you've never been an Audible customer and want to see what they offer, just go to www.audibletrial.com slash Excelsior Journeys and browse the unmatched selection of audio programs, download a title for free, and start listening. It's that easy. Why Audible? Audible content includes an unmatched selection of audiobooks, original audio shows, news, comedy, and more from the leading audiobook publishers, broadcasters, and entertainers. And with this free 30-day trial, you'll have your pick of it all. You can hear books of all genres narrated by Jim Dale, Stephen Fry, Will Patton, Alex Hyde-White, Jeff Brick, Neil Shaw, William Demerit, and even a few by me, George Soroy. So go to www.audibletrial.com slash Excelsior Journeys and start your own 30-day journey with Audible today.